Hello, Gender Viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you to a brand new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 20. As the Milwaukee Brewers. This is a strange logo. I don't know what's going on up here, but sure. Um, we have an expansion draft. Uh, the Seattle Mariners and Toronto Blue Jays have just joined Major League Baseball. Uh, so we need to submit our protection list. We can only protect 15 players. And yes, I could play around with this if I so chose, but I'm not going to do that. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is pick the obvious ones that we need to protect. Forster. Spire. Fisk. Buckner. Bly Levin. Caldwell, okay. So these are the players I consider absolutely, uh, I consider absolutely indispensable. Now let's start reviewing some of the others. First of all, Sparky Lyle. Sparky Lyle had a pretty good year, all things considered. But he's also 32 and he's starting to lose his stuff. Um, and it looks like it's been a while before his stuff's actually been really, really good. So I think we're, we're going to go ahead and not protect him. Wayne Garrett. Now, Garrett worked out pretty well for us last season. In ways. Um, uh, delicious beverage. Um, I think a lot of his ability comes from the fact he's a pretty good hand at third. And I know we spent a very long time looking for a third baseman. But I also know he costs $250,000. If we quickly look at our team's salary... He's the third most expensive guy on the team. And it's not at all clear that he deserves that much money. Yes, he gets on base, which is important. But his offensive skill set, it's not consistent enough that I'm going to continue to invest in him. So I'm going to leave Garrett deliberately unprotected. Uh, Ted Sizemore. I just signed him to a new deal. A deal I probably shouldn't have. But I think we can protect him. Uh, Edmondson had a very good first year. Or, yeah, first full year for us in the minors. I'm, or in the majors, I'm happy to bring him back. Bill Hands. Bill Haynes had a pretty solid season last year, but he's also 36. And banking on him to provide a third, especially after the injury, I'm going to let Haynes go too. Um, we have a lot of places where we could really do with a bit of an upgrade. Yeah, Grub as a DH isn't really working for me. I don't really need another second baseman. Steve Hargan's okay. Matty Alou... Yeah, there's just... Apart from the top of the top line talent, there's just not a lot here that I'm looking at. And I can say, with confidence, we need to bring this person back. Uh, this might even be a fairly good year to go ahead and maybe tank a bit. Try to get another top 10 draft pick. Because um, our overall talent level isn't where it used to be. So you know what? These are the only 8 people I'm going to protect. I see no benefit to protecting most of these other people. I just don't. Because um, look... 
they can only take a certain number of people per team, right? So yeah, I, I just I don't see anybody here where I immediately think I need to keep this person no matter what. Um So yeah, let's go ahead and let people walk for now. Um while we're here Carlton, have you changed your position? No, you really don't want a longer term deal. But I really want to give you one, like really badly. How about it? No. All right, you know what we're gonna do? Let's give you a $300,000 contract for one year. Just to make sure that he comes back. Um. Tom DeTore had a really good year in the minors. I'm willing to bring him back. And before I bother with any of these other folks... Oh, uh, Dick Ruthven. We need to make sure that he's protected too. I'll just do the one-year deal for him too. Is Ruthven on my protection list? Why isn't he? Oh, because you know what? He might actually be on the disabled list right now. Oh, because he doesn't have to be. Yeah, he's got four years of major league. Wait, what? Auto protect players with less than X pro service use. Why is Dick Ruthven not eligible to be protected? I guess there is no limit, so they could gut my team. If that's what happens, that's what happens. Um, why can I not protect Dick Ruthven? He's protected from the Rule 5. I get that. Let's sort by position. Maybe I just keep missing him. Why can I not grab him? <sighs> I'm going to pick Ask AI, and then I'm probably going to be deleting some of these people. It still is not letting me protect Dick Ruthven. I find that very vexing. Unprotect. 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 Yeah, we can protect these other guys. I'll go ahead and submit this list. I hope I don't lose Ruthven, but it seems like there's something about him that won't let me bring him back. Which I find terribly unfortunate. But, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and go to the expansion draft. Oh, it hasn't happened yet. Oh dear. Okay. That's fine. Everything's fine. Um... So let's go to arbitration hearings. Um, this is our first crack at free agency, right? We want to make sure that anyone that we're going to bring back is a significant contributor to the team or has the potential to be and Johnny Grubb can't hit I'm just going to instantly non-tender him 
someone else can pay him to not hit in the majors. Um, I don't mind these arbitration officers. What about Steve Bry? I mean, he's a center fielder that doesn't play center field that well. He's not a great hitter. Arguably, this is the worst year he's ever had. And he's 27. But I've got so much money to spend. Like, I've got 1.2 million. Or 1.5 million, rather. But still, not bringing him back would save us so much money that I could then spend elsewhere. I'm going to non-tender him, too. We're going to strip a lot of the bones from this team. Um, and I could bring back Woody Woodward, but frankly, why would I bother? Uh, Fred Stanley could be useful as a backup, and I'm not paying 150 grand for a backup. All right, we good. Okay, I really hope I don't lose Ruthven. That really bugs me. See, he's not even showing up in the list. So the only thing I can assume is that Yeah, the only thing I could assume is that the reason that allowed me to protect is because for some weird reason he's not eligible to be chosen. I wonder what the actual MLB... Uh, I don't have my phone with me. I can't look it up. Because I thought there was a, a limit of number of team players you could take from a single team. I want to say it's five. Or four, even. But I think we'll just go with no limit uh, for now. And hopefully it won't bite me in the ass too much. As most of my team just disappears. Right. Let's go up to arbitration hearings. Fist came back. The thing I'm most frustrating about Fisk is he's coming off the worst year of his career. Um, and he was healthy, too. He just didn't hit. And this does concern me. And it's one of the reasons why maybe we're better off not signing him to a guy gigantic contract. Um, I would instantly have re-signed the Fisk of the last three years. But for some reason, this year you only had 223. Um... Which is obviously a big issue. Foucault grabs Annal Reliever of the Year. I wonder if Forston got another Reliever of the Year award. Nope, we didn't win a single darn award. Well, that's disappointing. I mean, to be fair, we were only 78 and 84. Uh, we weren't great. Wayne Gross got a few votes, which isn't terrible. But, anywho, uh, let's get up to and that's reasonable. Alright, there is a ton of talent here in free agency. So let's look at where we've got holes right now. Um, how did you produce zero war? How are you exactly replacement level? Are you just that bad as a fielder? You're pretty bad. Oh, God. Okay. At least last year. Um, all right. We need that third baseman. We could use upgrades 
pretty much anywhere offensively, and we really need additional arms in the rotation. And I just trust that anyone we sign in free agency is not going to be on the protected list. Why did I submit it so early? What the hell is wrong with me? I'm not going to waste my time. If I sign anyone now, I'm just going to lose them in the protection list. So we're just going to go to the first year draft. And we're just going to have to pick bones uh, this year. That's really stupid of me. I really ought to know better. And I don't. So... Oops. Come on, Abby, get it together. All right. Eddie Murray would be a nice little pick. There's a fair bit of talent here. Nobody that really jumps to mind at me as this is the person that must be part of our team. But I'm sure we'll find something that's useful, right? Um, draft order, ugh, 17, wow, how the hell are we 17 at 78 and 84? I guess there was just a lot of parody. Oof. We're not even picking in the top half of the draft. So yeah, we're definitely not going to be in on virtually anyone in this list. We're just going to have to get who we can by the time... Uh... This could be a really bad year for us. But if we spend intelligently in free agency, we should hopefully be able to put together a fairly competitive team. Um... Damn. And I didn't vote for the Hall, Hall of Fame team, but I can do that real quick here in a second. I'd love to have Daryl Evans, but I can't give you Chris Spire. I can't. I mean, he's been ridiculous at shortstop. Mostly because of defense, but yeah, I cannot trade you Spire. So yeah, I'm going to have to decline, um, at least for now. Let's go to Hall of Fame voting real quick. Because I don't want to miss out on like a, a, a really amazing player. Uh, like Dom Drysdale, for example. Holy shit, was he good in our timeline. Pretty good in real life, too. But he wasn't the no-doubt Hall of Famer that he appears to be. It looks like he had a much longer and more productive career. Um in our version of the game than he did in uh, real life. I'll vote for Bob Friend. Oof, Bob Gibson wasn't very good here. That's rough. It looks like he his career ended a lot sooner. Yeah, he Bob Gibson is arguably one of the best pitchers of all time, and yet our Bob Gibson did uh, wasn't that good. He only had his peak was only one year, basically, which was 1968. Whereas if we look at his real life stats, he had a, a three year peak that was just ungodly, including 1968, and then a really great career apart from that. Um, sorry, Bob, no Hall of Fame for you in this timeline. Larry Jackson, meh. We're getting a lot of these okay pitchers, but we're not getting too many of the mega stars. I don't know if that's a tiny bit of an issue with OOTP for whatever reason here. He's still at over 500 homers. I'll vote for Ernie Banks. Um, is that the... Is that there's something about the way the game is is simulated that you don't get the giant stats you used to get, especially from pitchers in this era. Bob Gibson's a great example of that. But let's cast our ballot and move up to the expansion draft and see how bad the damage is going to be. Oh, right, the actual draft. God, I suck today. Uh, I did just get up not too long ago. Maybe that's my problem. Um... 
so yeah, right off the bat, everyone on this page we should just assume is going to be gone because it probably will be, except for maybe the relievers, which is a real shame because I'd love to grab any number of these players. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump up to our next pick. Interesting. I mean, Mark Fidrich is a hell of a consolation prize. Mark Fidrich had one of those careers who was really good for a couple years and then really not. Really good control, really good movement. He'd need a really good defense behind him. Uh, Gene Richards is a really talented hitter. Uh, he hits for a lot of con. He's basically Johnny Grub 2.0, but he can hit now. Um, Jim Morrison has the potential to be a frontline hitter, but it's going to take him some time to be a good third baseman. Uh, Bump Wills is a really good all-around hitter. And could potentially be a great one. We're going to take Jack Morris, please. Alright. I wasn't going to talk about it, but it drives me nuts that Jack Morris is a Hall of Famer. This is not a Hall of Fame career. It just isn't. He pitched a lot of years, and he pitched for the right teams at the right time. This is an okay career. His freaking career ERA is 3.9. And yeah, you can look at his ERA+, plus, and he's a little bit better than league average. 12% better than league average is not, is just not a Hall of Famer. He's not the best of the best. He was merely durable... And played for the right team at the right time. He played for Detroit in the 80s, which is a pretty solid team with guys like Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. But I mean, his strikeout to walk ratio is pretty mediocre. It's just, I don't look at this pitcher and see Hall of Famer. Except for the win totals, which is the stupidest thing to base a pitcher success on. Jack Morris should not be in the Hall of Fame. But I'm, I'm not going to get that upset about it. I just had to make a comment. Uh, Terry Pohl is a pretty talented hitter. Okay. If we are building for the future... Ooh, I didn't even look at Julio Cruz. Uh, looks like I shouldn't have. Um, if we're building for the future... If, if we consider last year to be a speed bump, which it might be, then Fidrich is probably our best pick. If we believe that there's more to it than that, that we need a bit more of a long-term approach, I probably would take Morris in. Just because he's got... Okay, first of all, you did it again. Why do you keep doing this OTP? I want my scouting director... Oh, God, my scouting director loves Jack Morris. Ugh. Bump Wills is a really good hitting second baseman, but I've already got one of those in Tom Sizemore. Todd Sizemore. Tom Sizemore is the actor. Wow. Our scout doesn't think very much of Mark Fidrich at all. Doesn't even put him near the top. Where's the difference? OSA thinks he's going to have legendary control. We just think his control is going to suck. That's fair. Um... This is tough. Um... We really like Terry Poole for some reason. Which is interesting to me. 
Like, OSA thinks he'll be pretty good. We think he's going to be amazing. And an offensive talent like this may be a bit raw, but he's got such a good skill set. I think we go ahead and take Pool. If I hadn't decided to keep size more, I probably would take Bump Wills. But he just looks so damn good. And his career in real life was actually reasonably good. It's not a Hall of Fame level career. No one would ever suggest that. But he had some good years. And I will take that. Uh, let's draft him. Plus he's Canadian, which is kind of fun. Um, right. We're now into the second round. Um... As a potential day one contributor, we could do a lot worse than uh, Gil or Heel Flores. I frankly don't see the need to dive any deeper. We could always use more outfielders. We could Dale Barra. Uh, is that Yogi's son or Yogi's brother? I can't remember. I think it's this. Might be his son. I can't remember. You know, it'd, it'd be kind of fun to take a flyer on him. I don't think he's going to end up being all that great. But we're going to have tons of money in the budget anyway. Might as well spend it. Um, And then we're down here to a bunch of players that aren't terribly thrilling. Are there any interesting players that we've missed? Like, just some of the just crank home runs. Eh. What about a pitcher just strikes people out like it's going out of style? We take Barry Court, sure. That's good enough. I don't really see the point in continuing on when there's just not that many good players left. Let's negotiate. Million dollar question is, do I think Dale Barra has such a bright future that I want to sign him now for 300 grand instead of waiting a couple of years? And I think the answer to that is no. I realize I just counteracted my own argument from earlier, but I, I don't frankly see the point of spending $350,000 for a player who, at his peak, might be slightly above replacement level. Um, and you can see in real life, he just wasn't that good. So, yeah. Let's go to the expansion draft. I think I did the same thing last time we did an expansion drafting game. I just completely spaced. I bet I lost a lot of people. Sure. Alright. So who, if anyone, did we lose? Um, We didn't lose Dick Ruthven, which is very important to me. Okay. I can't immediately spot who was taken from us. Uh, let's quickly look at the new rosters so if we recognize any names. Uh, we had Dick Boswell, Dave Boswell at one point, didn't we? Yeah, but he hasn't been with us for a while. I'm actually kind of insulted. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. My unprotected players aren't good enough for you. I see how it is. Don't forget that we did lose a fair few of them in free agency. And that could be the other reason why uh, nobody really took any of our guys. I think someone took Sparky Lyle, though. Maybe. 
Hey, here you go. Here's someone who used to be on me. Damn, I can want to keep Paul Edmondson. You jerks. Yeah, enjoy Roger Repos being your starting left fielder. That's definitely going to go brilliantly for you. Okay. You guys sucked. Fair enough. Um, Let's go back to our team. The only team that really matters. Alright, so we look at the roster screen. We currently have a roster of 24. Uh, I really don't want Wayne Gross playing third. He's pretty terrible at it. Oh, Steve Bry. Oh, no. We uh, we non-tendered him and grabbed, didn't we? That's right. That's right. Um, I like to see Kevin Bell improve a bit before I... Where did, like, half my minor leaguers go? Did they all just retire, or were they grabbed? Oh, here we go. We can see you got taken in the draft. Yeah. Most of our... Oh, they took my backup catcher. That's a shame. Oh, well. Um, I think it was just a bunch of people just became eligible for free agency, so... All right, Rule 5 draft. Our pitching staff is pretty solid. Um... I'm not too fussed about that. Eh, we could get some improvement to it. But at the end of the day, it's not crippling. But I will look at the Rule 5 draft pool and see what I can grab. And there's literally no one that's even marginally interesting, as I suspected. All right, let's check free agency. Oh, we got Barry Court, who's instantly probably going to go to uh, to AAA. I have a feeling his major career is going to minor league career is going to be quite short. Let's get into this free agency business now. Okay. Elliot Maddox is an otherworldly center fielder. Who's had a pretty great career. Uh, he's got a very varied offensive skill set. But. He's also extremely expensive. Wait, Steve Carlton is only worth half of Tom Seaver? Get Johnny Bench, but I don't really need I don't really need or want Johnny Bench. Alright. I mean I can't really pass up Steve Carlton. Even a 31 year old Steve Carlton. Although Tom yeah, actually Carlton's career's been better. Let's go ahead and take a Oh, wow. You don't like my manager. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to be paying for a decline. If we put this much money into one guy. So, we've got to get protection for the team. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a six-year deal. And we're going to go with team options. Because I need to be able to move on from him if it turns out that his career peters out. Done. Um, and I do want to add at least one starter. And we also need a third baseman. Let's actually quickly check third base. Uh, Dick Allen would be a terrific DH. Like, and our DH right now is actually pretty weak. Wow, really? Like, I don't want to toss my manager aside, but damn. 
RV can't really play third. I could bring Bill Sudeikis back. He's not that expensive. Aurelio Rodriguez is a great third baseman who can't hit all that well. And he's only ever been above average once in his career. I don't think he's worth it. I'm highly tempted to actually bring back Sudeikis. Yeah, this is totally reasonable. Let's bring him back for a couple of years and, uh, and see what he can manage. Like, I'd love to add Oscar Gamble. Oh, my God. He'd be such an offensive force on this team. Uh... First of all, would you even play for us? You sure would. Okay. All right. Okay. If we push our chips to the middle of the table and make this our year, Oscar Gamble exactly the kind of player we should be adding. Um, we could put Buckner at first. We could put. I mean, look, AC is not that great. It looks like. Um. Let's go for broke. Let's do it. Fuck it. And uh, let's at least... Oh, no, I said we wanted to get involved in a pitch or two, didn't we? Um, Bill Singer? No. Tom Seaver. Uh, I'm only signing you for three years. Yeah. I hope you get Thurman Munson. All right, let's look at starting pitchers. It seems like there's something about our manager where it's going to make it difficult for us to sign free agent pitchers, so duly noted. Do we could take a chance on Tom Bradley? I don't think we do. Oh, Dean Chance. So Singer doesn't want to play for us. Carlton doesn't want to play for us. Seaver does, but he's incredibly expensive. I mean, I would think Les Kane or Vita Blue would be the choice, really. Kane is particularly interesting to me because he's a high strikeout pitcher, which is something we don't currently have on the roster. Uh, would you pitch for us? You would. And I think this is a very reasonable deal. Let's make it. Let's take the deal. And we'll go to the Hall of Fame voting results. Um, okay. We also have Terry Poole to consider. Um, we're going to want to find a space for him, but we also don't have to rush him. And he could just play as a DH. How much more are, is LA giving you? A fair bit more. But I'm willing to make the offer to try to get you in. Okay, we got Gamble, which is awesome. Uh, I'm really excited about Gamble as a new offensive frontline player. And look, if AC's got to go play in the minors for a couple of years, he plays in the minors for a couple of years. Um, that's not the end of the world. Oh, we did need a backup catcher too, didn't we? Um, well, you 
you guys think very highly of my new rookies? I mean, I do too, but I don't think Poole's going to make the, the opening day roster unless we just make him a DH. Uh, let's try to grab ourselves a quick backup catcher. So I need catchers. And look, I'm not going to spend a ridiculous sum. You know, Manny Sangui, and that sounds perfect. You're exactly the kind of player this team needs. He doesn't even want a major league deal. That's perfect. And he'll get promoted as soon as he signs. Because I just need a backup catcher. And we got Maddox. So we've rebuilt our outfield. And I guess I should be thinking at the end of the day, my goal is to win one world championship, not ten, right? So I guess going, pushing all in isn't quite as risky as I might have made it sound. Um, so one thing that's actually good is this gives us pretty considerable depth in the outfield that we just haven't had for a long time. Um, where we've got three legitimate frontline starters and we've got a bit of depth in case people get injured or what have you. Um, how did Spire not get a gold glove last year? How has he never won a gold glove? Like, he gave us almost a win and a half just because of his defense. I don't get it. Whatever. Um, all right. The next question. Do we call up Terry Poole and have him be a designated hitter or just find a spot for him? I mean, we only have one contact hitter right now. And a second bat of that caliber would be really helpful. Let's call him up, too. Uh, Flores can stay in the minors. Court. Court is legit better than a fair number of our relievers, so we'll call him up, too. And we'll also call up Jason Todd. Is his name Jason? Jackson Todd. You know what? Your name is Jason now, Jackson. Deal with it. And you'll become the Red Hood someday. Um... Which, you know, if the baseball thing doesn't work out, that's a pretty fair compromise. Go up to the Hall of Fame voting results. Uh, Sudeikis and Kane are both likely to join us. There goes Kane. Boom. And then we need Sudeikis. Really? The fans really like Wayne Garrett that much? I don't know why. Like, he's a good third baseman that just couldn't hit. Hmm. Fans are weird. But we brought in Bill Sudeikis. Now, in my opinion... We have made a significantly better team than we had uh, in the offseason, which is great. Really? Why would interest almost crash? Like, he can't hit anymore. I mean, I get that certain players are popular. I totally understand that. But at a certain point, come on, guys. You shouldn't be that loyal to players that are that terrible. But did we get Manny Sanguian? That's the real question. We did. And you instantly get promoted. Ooh, he's raised my budget. Nice. All right. Real quick. Where could we add more talent? That would make a significant difference. The bullpen. And I'd also maybe like to get another middle infielder, but I think the bullpen is the big area that we could use another upgrade in. Hello, Dick Bainey. Please come play for the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Come 
join us. Oh no. I will happily pay you almost anything you want. Really, Boston? Fuck you. That is my pithy one-word response to you. I guess that's two words. Sorry. Okay, seriously? Go to hell, Boston. Go to hell. You know what? I've got tons of money right now. 200 grand a year. Now sign the damn contract. And quit dicking me around. Um, right. This has the potential to be a scary team. Just outright terrifying. And I like that a lot. Okay. Um, let us just sim to the next month for now boom to the major league roster with you Player development. We can quickly review this, but I doubt most of it's going to be all that interesting to us. Hey, his last Kane's control got better. That's kind of fun. Um. Okay. Yeah, there's not much I can really see here. His contact drops. That's irritating. That's fine. Everything is fine. Okay. So let's get our roster set. We have 33 players. We're obviously not putting 33 players on the roster. And we have way too many bloody pitchers. Like, so many pitchers. At least five of them are going to go. All right. Travers. Gone. Eddie. Terrible. Uh, nope. 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 Hey, is that Mike Scott, the one who used to pitch for the... Oh, it's Mickey Scott. I thought it was the one who used to pitch for Astros. Okay. Uh, rule? Nope. How many pitchers is that now? 12. Okay. So we need to drop two position players. Uh, Sam Ewing, I don't know what purpose you serve. So, demoted. And I have way too many outfielders. Like, seriously, so many outfielders. AC, I think. No. it's It's got to be Rogadzinski, because Rogadzinski sucks. Like, I don't even know why you're on my team. I don't remember picking you. Yeah. Get the heads. Now, we don't have a huge amount of depth in the middle infield position. We do have Ken Bell, or Kevin Bell, uh, who could fill in a third if we needed to. Um, is there no one here that's worth trading? You know, people were kind of high on Cohen's last year. Uh, let's set him to available. I'm going to see if I can't flip him. Sorry, AC. I don't want to offend Aaron Sheelan again. Um, all players, just prospects and regulars. I'm not looking to take on, uh, salary. Unless there's a really good reason to. But uh, this is about finding a good middle infield type and just having someone that I can just plug in in an emergency. Uh, Bob Sheldon. Meh. Ideally with some positional flexibility. 
I could grab Frank Duffy, but all he does is play shortstop, and he's stupidly expensive. Jack Heideman. Meh. Uh, Ed Crosby. Meh. Larry Lentz. Meh. Like, I'm not necessarily looking for a franchise-changing player, but I do want someone who could fill in competently at at least two to three positions. And right now, I'm not seeing that. Uh, nope. Nope. Uh, nope. Eh, not for 180 grand. Uh, you can handle yourself with second and third. I guess that's something. But no. I could grab John Lowenstein. No thanks. You know what? Let's grab Mark Wagner. Uh, he's a fairly decent hitter, and if we let him get some practice in the minors, uh, he could actually be a pretty good middle and field prospect. Yep, we'll make it. Trade from a position of strength to a... From a position of weakness, rather, to a position of strength. And then I think maybe promote Bell. Are you the guy I just acquired? No, I drafted you. Okay. Um... Is there a good middle infield type? We should check the opening day. Actually, that's an even better idea. Let's check the opening day roster. Uh, check the waiver wire. Because if there's ever a better place to grab a utility infielder, I don't know what that position would be. Because we could sign one, but then we'd have to probably pay a fair bit of money. And uh, I just don't think it's worth it. The Alan Trammell guys for you. No, they're on different teams. This is heresy. Seattle and Toronto, I demand that you make a trade right now. You cannot break up Lou Whitaker and Alan Trammell in my mind. They are the same player. They're not the same player. Lou Whitaker deserves to be in the Hall of Fame too. Um, without any question in my mind. But we're here to check the waiver wire. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of shit here. Oh yeah. Um, how about infielders? If Kusa could play anywhere but first, I'd actually take him. You can only play second. Yeah, we're already at the part where most of these people are going to be shit. Oh well. Let's check free agency. Because this is exactly the kind of player that tends to be undervalued, right? Okay, here we go. I want... Let's say fielding rating at second base to be at least 50. That should easily clear out a lot of the chaff here. Here we go. I like Rich Severson. Does anyone here... Ooh, you're a pretty good shortstop too. But so is Severson actually. Let's sign him. I'll even give you a major league contract. And we'll just play a man short until he signs, which hopefully shouldn't be too long. Let's go and sim up uh, one week. We probably have a little bit too big a bullpen. But I'm fine with that. I'd rather we have uh, 
start shifting in that direction a bit before anyone else does. Oof, poor Burp Lylevin. He's been nothing if not solid. Um, yeah. How Burt Blylevin had to wait for even a year or two years is just obscene to me. It is absurd to me that Burt Blylevin was not in the Hall of Fame, like, almost instantly. But, you know, people, do, people get hung up on wins and losses and forget that he was just shy of 300. And yet his peripherals are so much better than, say, a Jack Morris. But thankfully, the voters eventually got it right. Wow. Apparently, Rich Severson is the key to baseball glory. I had no idea. Okay. Now, about a million and a half dollars in money to spend for next season. Priority one is re signing Ruthven. I actually think he's more of a priority than signing Fisk because we don't have a lot of pitching talent. And he's been really consistent, has fit, has Ruthven. So yeah, I'll give you a one-year deal. I won't even hesitate on that, Fisk. This is a suspiciously reasonable contract that I'm only going to modify by asking for team options at the end of it. But you know what? This is... This was because he has no leverage. Uh, last year was the worst year of his major league career. And by grabbing him now, I'm probably saving a lot of money. Unless it turns out he sucks. But, you know, who knows. We got Dick Ruthven back. Well, not back. It's not like he went anywhere. And we brought back Carlton Fisk. And the fans go crazy. Now, guys, we have to have a better offense than we had last year. That's got to be our priority. And that's one of the reasons I grabbed Gamble. Oh, nice job, Kane. Uh, because it seems like he does have the potential to add a ton to this offense. Um, We'll wait on that because I don't really have a great middle and field support system. Five hits for Bill Buckner. Most of them... Ooh, a triple and a double. That was a really good day. Nice for Bill Buckner. Uh, Poole has a 20-game hitting streak. Gamble's going to miss a week. Another shutout for Kane. Y11 is going to miss a couple days. Jackson Todd. Ooh, he put some heat on his fastball. That's always good to see. Uh, Gross got better. Fist got better. Severson even improved. Huh. Wallace got a bit better. Maddox got a bit worse. Poole got worse. And then, yeah. Uh, really? Good for Wayne Gross. Uh, Terry Poole is your batter of the month. And then Ayala had a really good year in AAA. Um, wait, he has 16 homers and 179 at-bats? That's ridiculous. Holy shit. Wow. Like, let's just focus on that right now. 16 homers. Less than 200 at-bats. That's insane. Way to go, Ayala. Ayala's getting to be the kind of player that might be expendable on this team. But let's look and see what we got. So, Gamble, this, this cannot be a thing. Please stop. 
Uh, you've hit 300 the last four years in a row. I do not permit you to hit 235. Start hitting, Oscar, and start hitting right the fuck now. Because this is not okay. You do not sign a gigantic free agent contract and then immediately have the worst season of your career. Uh, Poole has been a godsend. Look at this. Like, he was definitely a great choice for us. And I didn't anticipate it even playing him this year. But he definitely has earned his way onto the club. Uh, which is nice to see. He's been playing a fair bit of right field. Warren Dune having him and Gamble switch off? Maybe. Other than Spire all of a sudden not hitting. Uh, this is a really good offensive team this year. We're first in run scored. And we've got a pretty damn good rotation. A bullpen that's not great, but it's pretty solid. Our defense is pretty shit. We make a lot of errors. But, all things considered, this is a pretty solid team so far. And what we need is we need consistency. Uh, especially we really need Oscar Gamble to heat up. We need him to start just cranking homers every other day like they're going out of style. Because he is a critical part of this team's offensive capabilities. If Oscar Gamble remains cold, we're going to have issues. Damn. Bill Travers all of a sudden is really having a good year in AAA. Good for him. But then in McLaughlin struck out 16, but he's not my pitcher. see who on our team made the all-star team this year wait bill suit i didn't even realize that you asked me to do that um because i want to win yeah all right Let's talk personnel. Scouting director, George Susie, please come back. What? Ah, oh, George. But you've done such a good job. Man, that's some bullshit. All right, whatever. Uh, pitching coach can come back. And we'll let everyone else have a new deal because why not really George why don't you want to be my scouting director anymore I don't get it we've made beautiful music together you're killing me buddy Oh no, okay. Alright. Well look, Ayala, this is your chance. You're not the same kind of player as Buckner, but hopefully you can provide some positive offense. We could always let Wallace fill in a bet here and there too. Oh my god, fucking Yankees. Knock this shit off. Quit sneaking ahead of me every damn year. All right. Uh, Terry Forster made it again. Really, this entire team, I get one freaking all-star. Come on, guys. Really? Man, that's some bullshit. All right. Whatever, jerks.
Yeah, it looks like we just can't put together a winning streak. It looks like we go win, lose, win, lose, win, lose. And that's not ideal. So one of the things I'd like to do, Oscar, my brother, you've got to start cranking baseballs. Spires corrected himself nicely. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Um... All right, you know what? LaCordy's not pitching that well. Let's call up. Ooh, Flores would might be a nice upgrade. I'm gonna give Travers a shot as kind of a long man in the bullpen. Um, how's Ayala doing? He's hitting homers. So I guess that's something. We can stop shortlisting him. And Bly Levin. Like, the thing is, I can't honestly see an area where I could instantly upgrade the team by trading. I didn't even want Ewing and maybe trade him for an upgrade in the bullpen. Like, I would actually flat look at veterans, actually, and see if we can get an upgrade that way. I really like Dave LaRoche, actually. Like, a lot. I don't love his control, which means I was going to be prone to walks, but I love big strikeout pitchers. Then again, Gogolewski is almost as good. Yeah, we'll make this deal. Sorry, Travers. I was just teasing you. You don't actually get to pitch in the majors this year. Unless someone else gets hurt. Because right now, what we need is we just need a string of victories. And that's unfortunately something that we can't really predict. Um, we would need players to step up. We need someone to get hot who hasn't been hot. Cough, cough, Oscar Gamble, cough, cough. Because, um, I mean, this is still by far one of the worst seasons of his career. And it shouldn't be. But if we look at his scouting report, look at this. He's starting to tail off. His power is dipping. His contact's dipping. His contact potential is cratered. Right now, he looks like kind of a shitty choice. Um, especially given how much money we spent on him. But there's not much I can do about that. Um, I just have to kind of just keep pressing my players and having them. God damn it, really? I have a fucking Travers day because he knows I don't have... No, I will call it rule. Rule, rather. This is the worst time to start losing pitchers. Because I need to put together a nice long string of victories. And with that, I need really good pitching. Or I guess really hot offense would work too. Alright, it's just now September 1st. Um... I'm going to literally just cram people onto the roster as a way to give people a break. I know we're starting service time clocks early, and other seasons I would care. This is not that season, though. His average is creeping up, um, which is really good. 
because that's going to be a big piece of the puzzle. Okay, we're starting to get at least the hitter we got last year. I was kind of hoping for the hitter that they had in 1975, but the 76 version of Oscar Gamble is still a pretty good player. All things considered. And let's play to the end of the year. So what we really need now is we need consistency. We need to just be not losing games for any reason to any... God damn it, really? All right, we got Les Kane back. Stop hyperventilating, Abby. We can do this. We can make our way into the plus. I just said, come on, seriously. Why do you always pick the end of the year to melt down? Come on. So here's the thing. Um, we have to play the Twins, one of the best teams in the league. They get to play the Tigers, one of the worst. We are probably not making the playoffs this year. Which is absolute bullshit. Because once again, we cratered during down the stretch. Um... I am not happy right now. But maybe my opinion will change. We have to beat Minnesota. That's step one. And Minnesota kicked our asses. God damn it. I said we had to fucking win. Beat the damn twins. Okay, seriously, stop it. Um... I, I do not make the playoffs. Why are you saying... So yeah, they've clinched. Yeah. I missed by one fucking game. Oh, my God. This is ridiculous. Look, the Yankees aren't even that good this year. But they got George Brett and Tony Armas, who never hit 30 homers in his career. I guess he did it 30 homers a couple of times. My mistake. I'm thinking of the other Tony Armas. Tony Armas Jr. Not Tony Armas Sr. But damn. Come on, Yankees. Come on. That is a kick in the junk. That is a major league kick in the junk. Good for Kansas City. But, uh, damn it. I, I legit do not know what went wrong this year. I don't know what we could do. Oh, we got our first 2020 player. Nice. Um, damn it. That should have been our damn season. And the Yankees were just one tiny bit better than we were at the right time. We'll look at this stuff in a minute. Um, all right. What went well this season? Wayne Gross was just an amazing player this year. And he played really good at first base. Um... He took everything that he learned from his 1976 season and just turned it up just a tiny bit. Uh, Gamble ended up being good, but not otherworldly. And for the amount of money we put into him, I kind of want 74-75 Gamble, not 76-77 Gamble. Uh, Spire continues to have great season after great season. Arguably, he's the best Milwaukee Brewer in terms of consistency. Uh, Fisk had himself a nice little bounce back year. Um, virtually a carbon copy of his 1973, if just a shade better than he was that year. Um, 
Maddox. Of the two big ticket items, Maddox is the one that hasn't worked out yet. This is the first year since his rookie year his offense was below league average. And that's frankly not acceptable. Um, hopefully he can continue to perform at a high level and, uh, and give us some of our value back. Um, but that was a bit of a disappointing season. Uh, Sudeikis did well. There's something about him playing on the Brewers, apparently, that brings out the best in him. Um, this is his best season in a couple of years, so I'm not upset with Sudeikis' year. I still think we could do better, of course, but... Uh, Terry Poole had an outstanding rookie season. I'm looking forward to more from him in the future. Uh, Sizemore took a bit of a step back. Not bad by any stretch, but, um, I think we need to start looking for a second base replacement, too. And Wallace didn't play a whole lot, but he had an okay season. Um, and then we had varying levels of suck from the rest of the roster. So, it is what it is. Pitching... Les Kane had a great year. Forster continues to be solid. Burt Blylevin had a bad year. That's troubling to me. I don't like that. Arguably, a career average Burt Blylevin wins us the pennant. And he did get hit a bit harder this year than he did last year, but this is still very troubling, especially the walk rate. Shit. Yeah, he struck out fewer. He actually struck out more on a rate basis. But through fewer innings, this is worrying to me. He allowed more homers. He was just the worst pitcher he's ever been. I mean, Ruffin wasn't great either. Um... Most of our pitching staff actually had kind of a down year. But look, Ruthven is just here because he provides consistency. I think we need another starting pitcher. I think that's what's holding us back right now. Because Les Kane had a phenomenal year, and if I had even one other great starting pitcher to pair with him... Uh, Forster, you continue to be ridiculous in your ability to pitch. Um, I'm never letting you leave my team. Ever. Uh, Aquisto had a really great full season. I've got a really good bullpen. What I don't have is depth in the pitching staff. And I need a new starter. I think that's pretty, pretty clear right now that we need... Um, we need that extra pitcher. And also, Les Kane being healthy the whole year would have also pushed us over the top. So the good news is there's room to be hopeful for the future because no one really played out of their minds we shouldn't expect this again. And those are always the most worrying seasons. When you see someone who's never had a great career spike like that. Uh, maybe Wayne Gross. Maybe this isn't Wayne Gross's true talent level. But he worked as advertised. He hit doubles, he hit homers, he drew walks, and those are all the things that we expect him to do. Um, losing Buckner was also really rough. Because Buckner is one of our best contact hitters. So hopefully we get him back next year and uh, we get to enjoy a full season of Buckner.
Um, we still need to improve at DH, I think is the other area that we could really use some help at. Because Wallace is okay, but a DH that only hits eight home runs is problematic. And so I think that's something that we're going to need to address next offseason. Um, we were so close this year. I could practically taste it. Damn it. Okay. But for now, I'd like to thank everyone for watching so far. Um, we just got to get over the hump little bit of a push and i think we'll have a really tremendous season next year but until then thank you for watching this has been a vindian and i bid you good day